On December 1st, World AIDS Day, people across the globe remembered those who have died from the disease and celebrated those who continue to live with it. Despite advances in medicine, many people still don't know the facts about this disease that affects 34 million people worldwide. Earlier, I spoke with Dr. Doug Drevitz, Chief of the Infectious Disease Section of the College of Medicine at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center about the disease and the ongoing myths surrounding it. Doug, how widespread is AIDS in Oklahoma? Well, the last statistics from the Oklahoma State Department of Health showed that there are about 5,000 cases of uh, folks living with HIV or AIDS in the state as of 2011. How many people are infected every year? You know, that same year, there are a total of about 380 new infections. And that contrasts with about 330, 320 the year before. So a good thumbnail is around 300 to 350 new infections per year. What's the difference between AIDS and HIV? Well, that's a great question, and I, I hear that a lot. HIV is a virus. It stands for the Human Immunodeficiency Virus, and that is a germ, if you like, and it's the germ that causes the clinical disease that we call AIDS, which stands for the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. So in a sense, you get the virus, or you become infected by the virus. As it progresses in the body, it causes the disease that we know as AIDS. How does AIDS actually affect the body? Well, the virus has the um, specific characteristic of destroying the immune system, and it lives in cells that we call CD4 lymphocytes, as well as other cells of the immune system. And over time, what it does is it damages the immune system and depletes the immune system so that folks are much more susceptible to a variety of different kinds of infections. What are myths regarding AIDS? Well, you know, that's another great question. One of the, the, the two biggest ones that we think about are that it's stereotypically a disease of men who have sex with men. But in fact, in Oklahoma, about a third of folks who acquired HIV last year did not have that risk factor. And so the other big myth that we have is that, you know, if you're riding on a bus or sitting in a waiting room with somebody who has HIV, that you can get sick from them. That is also not true. So really, it's, you have to be careful because uh, many people are at risk for the disease who don't think they are. And many people who think they're going to contract the infection from folks sitting next to them really have nothing to worry about. Since there are people that are infected and they don't know, what should people be aware of as far as symptoms in order to suggest that maybe they need to look into it? Right, so one of the first things we see is an infection in the mouth called thrush. It's a fungal infection, and it manifests as white plaques or patches in the mouth. Often we'll see folks who start losing weight for no good reason or who develop a cough that just will not get better over a period of time. Sometimes we also see skin rashes and skin diseases. Um, and then it's often in folks who, who are generally suspicious that they've been with somebody who has HIV and they generally have a, have a, a suspicion that uh, this could be HIV infection. Is a cure close? A cure is not close, but that doesn't mean that folks who have HIV cannot live a very long and very productive and a very healthy life. We have a bunch of great medicines now. Many of them uh, you can take without a whole lot of problems. We have three different kinds of formulations now that are one pill once a day. And folks who get on treatment early and stick with the program and don't pick up any other bad habits such as cigarette smoking or heavy drug and alcohol abuse, they can really live a very long life. HIV will not negatively impact their life. Doug Drevitz from the OU Health Sciences Center. Thank you for joining us. You bet. Thank you for having me.